Hi, everyone. Good evening. This is Margie Santos, and welcome to another episode of the Synergy Network Talk Show. We are so excited today to have another guest with us. She is a gospel singer. She is a gospel a songwriter. She's, she does so many things for the Lord. So everybody, please welcome Angela Lopez to the show. God welcome, bless you Angela. all. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for coming and being here with us. We're so honored to have you here. And we just want to pray to invite God in here with us. You know, we don't want to start anything, anything that we do. We should always invite the Lord in with us. So, Father God, <coughs> Father you, God, we just thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank, thank you, you for God. another opportunity, Father God, to just help promote your kingdom, Father God, and your people, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for our sister, Angela Lopez, that is here tonight with us, Father God. And we thank you for her life. And we thank you for everything that you're doing in her life, Father God. And you're using her in a mighty way, Father God. And we thank you for her soul, Father God. And we just continue to, to ask you, Father God, to be in her life and to guide her and to be with her and just use her continue to use her father god where she's at and nationwide or all over the world whatever you may have her do father god but just be with her throughout the whole time father god and we thank you lord for tonight's show and the, we thank you for the people that are viewing tonight's show father god the people that are here with us and they're connecting from all over the place father god thank you lord for everybody and we bless them in jesus name we pray amen Amen. So let's just take uh, five or 10 seconds here to share the video. That way we can invite our friends and everyone into the video. If you go to the Synergy Network Worldwide talk show page, that's where you'll find it. And um, let's see. Yeah, let's uh, connect. I'm going to share this in the groups as well. While you're doing that sharing, give me one minute, okay? I'm going to put. Sure, sure. So let's go ahead and post this, share it in the other groups. Okay, just share it to the Synergy Entrepreneur Group, Synergy Network Worldwide Group. All right, perfect. All right. <clears throat> so I do see a, a few people that are joining us. Thank you for joining us, guys. And again, we just want to welcome Angela Lopez. And um, so we just want to start out, Angela, for you just telling us who is Angela Lopez. Tell us some more about you. Where are you from? You know, where did you grow up and everything about you? Go ahead. The stage is yours. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous here. So I'm... Um, I was born in Bronx, New York, but I'm originally from Worcester, Massachusetts, and I, I'm, I'm ex extremely nervous. So excuse me. It's okay. Me, I um, that's pretty much me. So you're from New York. I'm from New York, Bronx. Yay! <laughs> I'm also one from um, from Queens, New York. Yeah. So you were born and raised in in the Bronx. I I was actually um, born and raised here in Worcester, Massachusetts, but I really, um, I kind of grew up in Bronx. Funny okay. story being that um, I was born out there, but my parents, um, they were drug dealers and they would travel to New York to pick up the drugs. And unfortunate, it's unfortunate, but I used to take those rides out there. I had family out there in Bronx. Okay. And um, so we would do the drive and I would stay with my aunts or my uncles out there as my mom did the trip. And that's pretty much I would, you know, just hang out there for the day or for the weekend. My, my parents would pawn me off <laughs> to the family while they went to do their thing. It's unfortunate. That's uh, that's that's how I grew up. It's but, part of your um, testimony. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's part of me. It's who I am now. I'm not the same person anymore. My parents are not the same person anymore but um man so i just want to tell you real quick we have some viewers and they're saying hi to you we God have diana you. yes uh diana fuentes caro say hello and sarah torres is saying hello so we have people watching and uh yeah. just uh already admiring you angela i'm extremely nervous so bear with me i'm feeling <laughs> like <laughs> I don't even it's know okay 
<laughs> no, it's okay. You are family here. You know, when you when you come on the Synergy Show, you become family. <laughs> okay. And um, so, Angela, so, okay, you were uh, born in, um, in Massachusetts, right? Yes. In Massachusetts. And then you traveled to the, the New York area. So, um, and you're, you're, where are you originally, um, your nationality? I'm Puerto Rican. Okay. I'm Puerto Rico. My, okay. Yeah. My, my mom is from Puerto Rico. My dad is from New York. Okay. Awesome. We're, we're Puerto Ricans. Yeah. <laughs> that's, Puerto Rico. that's amazing. <laughs> All right. So just tell us a little bit, just a little bit more about the background. So um, were you always in church? Did you grow up in the church or when did you come to know the Lord? So as a child, my parents, they were like in and out of church. So I was introduced to church through them. Um, I used to go to church and I used to love it as a child, even as a, as a youth. But I never really could say I belonged to a church for that long because obviously my parents were in and out of, out of church. I came to know the Lord at 21 years old. And I don't know, it was just an amazing experience. I think that my old pastor's wife, she invited me to church one day. I was in my cousin's house and we were smoking marijuana. And she she was living there for, the, um, for some time because she was living in a shelter. And my cousin offered her a place to stay. And, she started to talk about the Lord and I just felt something beautiful. You know, I felt like I was lacking something, like I needed what she had because as, you know, I I had an addiction of smoking marijuana. So as we're there smoking and stuff, she never like once knocked us or said, hey, you need to put that out because I'm a Christian. So I felt like she really gave me a strong testimony of who she was and you know, she didn't judge us for what we were doing. And although, mm -hmm. you know, we, we weren't doing anything right, nice because back then it was illegal. But I just really wanted what she had, which was peace. Mm -hmm. She was just so peaceful, so loving. And I needed that because I was going through a rough time out in the world. You know, when you don't have the Lord, you don't have that peace. And I was at a point in my life where I didn't even want to really live anymore. Okay. There was no purpose. Okay, so then she started to show you love, and she and, and you saw the peace that she had, and you wanted to know more about it. Is that what it was? I, I did. I wanted to know more about it, so she invited me to church. And at 21 years of age, I accepted the Lord into my Ooh. life. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been mm -hmm. almost 20 years in August, so it's it's amazing because knowing the Lord you just don't want to ever go back. I, you know, went through so much being out there in the world. I experienced so many things, you know, at such a young age, like going to the club, smoking weed, drinking, hanging out, being in the bars. At such a young age, I was able to enter into into these areas because I used to use my sister's ID. But once I knew the Lord, it was like no coming back. He made me experience something that I never had, which was ultimately uh, a love, you know, peace. <laughs> Yes, I love that. You know, yeah, and it's crazy because you hear so many testimonies and people that go out into the world, even myself, my own testimony you'll hear one day is that we go into the world trying to fill of this void that we have, right? And we we try to fill it with different things and nothing nothing really fills the void. It's like we we still uh, you know, get what we want, but we still feel empty. And you know, and it's it's only Jesus that comes. You know, he'll come into our lives and fill this void that we have. So I'm so glad that that happened for you at a young age, too, yeah. at 21. The God be the glory. I mean, at 21 years of age, you'd think that you'd be, in, you'd be like, oh, my God, I'm 21. I can start here in the bars now. But I already had experienced that at such a young age that at 21 years of age, I needed something more than what I had experienced. You know, I, I just was tired of that life already. Wow, that's a that's a beautiful testimony. And and I know that it probably has not been, you know, um, um, you know, roses being with the Lord either, because we know that when you do things for the Lord, the enemy comes and he, and he attacks us. Right. So I know you have more to share with us, but I wanted to ask you because you're here because you're a singer, you're a gospel singer, you're a songwriter. Have you always sang as a little girl? Was that always in you? No, no, actually, no. Funny thing is, I was um, at service the other day, and they were singing, bang, 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 Espiritu Divino, 
Ven, 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 ya apoderate de mí. Yes. That brought back memories because I remember, you know, as my parents were going in and out of church, that was one of the songs that I sang as a child in church. And I remember holding the microphone <laughs> and singing it nonstop. I swear they had to take the microphone away from me. But other than that, that was like the only experience. And then when I came to church, um, when I was 21 years of age, I accepted God. Um, they would give me part here and there to sing. And I was super shy that I remember one day my pastor had to throw the microphone in my next to my lips because I didn't really want to sing. I was shy, but I love music. I love music so much. I couldn't even imagine why I was so shy. But I think one day it was a woman's service and they had put me to sing and I sang. And there was a brother there. His name was Julio Pagan. He was like, I really love the way that you sing. Would you mind singing like on a Sunday? And I'm like, oh my God. And I used to sing acapella all the time because, you know, we didn't really have, you know, instrument uh, people that knew how to play the instruments. We didn't have musicians. We didn't really do the, the pistas or anything. Right. So everything was acapella. And then when I, when he's like, okay, can you do on a Sunday? I'm like, oh my God, I got to learn what a pista. Are you kidding me? And I, I got so nervous. But that's where it, the passion for singing took place. And um, here I am now singing for the Lord. But I started to really get serious about music um, when I went through a separation in my marriage when everything kind of just crumbled down. Mm -hmm. My life changed right before my eyes. And not that I didn't know that this was going to happen because God did reveal himself to me and let me know mm -hmm. that I was going to go through something really tough in my life and that I wasn't ready for it. So he was letting me know, you got to prep for this. You need to prepare. So I started to, you know, prepare, but no one's ever ready for a separation. No one's ever ready for their home to be broken. Yeah. And this was something that, you know, the enemy, I was talking about this to someone earlier, where the enemy had came and he asked the Lord for my home and oh. um, came to me in a dream. And he presented this really beautiful portrait. And he says, I will give you this if you walk with me. But if you don't walk with me, I'm going to take everything away from you. And I said, I'm going to decide to continue to serve the Lord. So that's where a song that I wrote, it's called The CD. Mm -hmm. um, that song was so personal to me because I chose to continue to walk with the Lord. And walking with the Lord, I lost everything. I lost my home. I lost my health. I lost my children at one point. Um, so many things, even finances went down. I lost my job, everything. Like the enemy was not kidding. But I always said, if the enemy is coming after me so strongly, it's because he can see what's ahead. The, it's yeah. because he can see that because God's got purpose. something for me. Mm -hmm. So why would I give up what has given me happiness, what has given me joy to walk with the enemy that has pretty much mistreated me my whole life? Like, are you serious? That was an easy no for me, but yeah. So that was where the passion came in to sing because the Lord said after like two years of being separated, it was not easy. I went through a lot of struggles, depression. A lot of people didn't need it back. I was mm -hmm. alone um, through this trial. I pretty much was just all over the place. <laughs> and that's when the Lord told me to write and to sing to him. I never wrote music in my life. I barely even knew how to sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> I didn't even yeah. know. How to sing. Isn't that you crazy know? that in our in our darkest moments in life is where it's drawn out? You know, yeah. like it's you where you know we become so passionate about writing or singing. It's in our darkest moments, you know, the where we're actually more closer to God, where you know our, our passion is revealed. So that's what happened to you. Yeah, I thought it was in, 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 insane of him to ask me for that. Cause I didn't know when I had to seek help at this point because I knew that it was something that he was very serious about. He would mm -hmm. also reveal himself to me in dreams, give me, you know, songs and stuff, but I didn't know how to put any of it together. So, you know, he blessed me with a sister that was able to put her time and energy into me. And after the first or the second song, now I'm like pretty much on my own. And I've heard your music. I follow you on TikTok. And she <laughs> guys, she has an amazing voice. If you if you haven't heard any of her music, please follow her. And she's uh she's amazing. You you have this angelic voice, Angela. To God be the glory, always, always. Oh, Amen. Wow. So and then I also saw that you have a new album out. So tell us more about that. Oh, 
So <laughs> that um, that new song, it's a single, and it's called Dios, Tu Has Sido Bueno. Basically, um, in this song, because God has promised me so many things, and I'm proclaiming his promise in advance. And I'm saying, Amen. God, I know that you're going to give me what you told me. And I, I know that you're going to bless me. And you have been good in good and bad moments. And even though the winds wanted to take me away, you are still good. You know, God has protected me from everything. And I'm just letting him know you are Amen. good. Amen. And even though those winds wanted to take me away and it wanted to make me doubt your promise for my life, I'm still trusting you. And the one that um, actually helped me with this album, my producer, the new producer that I'm working with now is, I don't know if you guys know him, but Luis Fosforito Garcia. So he helped me with the instrumental. I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. And he was very on point when it came to the instrumental. So I've worked with various, you know, people, but um, this is a song that I'm pretty, pretty proud of. Do you want to share a little bit? I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Just a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I could, I could. Um, Dios, tú has sido bueno en mi dolor, me has sostenido cuando todo me dejaron, me quedé sola, triste y vacía. Pero tú, mi Dios, me has guardado. And you can listen to the rest. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, but. No, wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing with us. So, you, so guys, everyone's watching. You got a little sneak peek there <laughs> of the single that's coming. So when is it coming out? Well, actually, that one's already out. That one's okay. already out. Um, it's on all platforms, and in which, when within three months, I made eight point five k on views. I did an instrumental. Um, I mean, a uh, music musical video with letras letter. Um, how do mm -hmm. I say that in English? Um, lyrics. The lyrics were the lyrics. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. The la yeah. letra. Uh -huh. I did them in English and Spanish because I am also involved in a community. It's called the Christian community, YouTube community. And okay. they're really very supportive of everything that I'm doing. But the newest song that I just wrote <laughs> that I am so, I'm waiting to record it and I'm excited about it. It's called, um, what is the name of it? <laughs> A Donde Ire, Señor. <clears throat> That is my newest song that I'm working on right now. It's fully written. I have, you know, the instrumental beat. So now what's next is I'm working on going into the studio to record and, and make a music video on this song. Wow. And what's the name of that one? A Donde Ire, Señor. It means where would I go, Lord? Wow. I love it. I love the, the names of the songs that you pick. And God is just doing great things with you. He's good. He's good all the yes. time. <laughs> Amen. So now that you have your your CD and your music out, your single, do they ask you to sing more in church or? Well, funny story. So my church, I was um, with my church for um, 18 years and in the pandemic, it ended up closing down. And I used oh, to take wow. part quite often. I mm -hmm. would take part at least every other Sunday and then some you know special services so my pastor ended up closing it down but now i belong to a new church which is called besaida of worcester Iglesia Besaida. and so that's his brother's church and i've sang okay. once um i have a part to sing soon i have a couple churches that have invited me to sing i've sang at a couple churches already and i'm going to new york to sing Ooh. that's kind of a, <laughs> a big back thing back to your roots back to your roots back to my roots i have a pastor out there that has been following me for quite a for quite a while and he's always saying hey you know i have this going on can you come i said no for so long because i really wasn't ready for this ministry i really wasn't ready to travel um i really wasn't ready for a lot of things and i would always say no but finally i'm like you know what god i am ready it's time <laughs> i'm ready i only went to ohio <laughs> once to sing Mm -hmm. um, and I met some really amazing people there, but now I'm kind of just ready to do whatever it is that God has put in my hands. 
Amen. You know, it's like the word says that we make plans, um, but God orders our steps, right? Yes. So, you know, and, and he's the God that he'll send people our way to push us. You know, he'll send people to help us to get to the next level. You know, he wants us to grow. He wants to, to use us in mighty ways. So he's just amazing. Yeah. I can't really say amazing. that, you know, a lot of people has really pushed me. I have a lot of people that have supported me. But I think that when you have the Holy Spirit in your life, he is your biggest fan. <laughs> you know, he is your biggest supporter. He has given me the energy to do everything that I do. Everything that you see me doing, that has been from God. You know, he's the one that's like, hey, hello, wake up. Come on, you got to do this. You got to yeah, motivate. Let's go, let's go. Oh <laughs> yes. I don't want to do nothing today. How about that? He's like, no, you don't. <laughs> But he has given me the peace and the energy. Like you see me in person, I am the same person that you see on camera, off camera. I'm just so bubbly. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just happy. I'm at peace. I'm in love with my God. Yes. And what I love about him is he puts the pieces together for us. You know, sometimes we think that, you know, our our life is in pieces and how can we and we don't have to worry about, you know, how how the pieces are going to come together like the, like a puzzle. You know, um, God will put the pieces together for us. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Like he does that when we're working on something behind the scenes, he's working on something else for us for the next step, for the next level. And I see that he's doing that with you. It's just amazing. So Angela, where do we where do you see yourself? I know. Where do you see yourself in like five years? Where do I see myself? Oh my gosh. With the ministry, with the singing. What is what's in your heart's desire? Um something that God has recently spoken to me about, He has revealed Himself to me on many occasions, is that I love giving back. I love giving back to the community. I love being there for the homeless people. I don't know, it's just something that's in my heart okay. that with the little bit that I have, I love to give back. And he has shown me through dreams, through revelations, um, that he is going to bless me financially because I'm going to bless others. And he told me, I am going to put this in your hands. And he gave me a quantity, it's a number of, of how much money he was gonna put in my hands. And he says, the only thing that I'm asking you to do is back a portion to those in need. And it's definitely my passion. It's what I love to do. I would love to see myself being out there singing to those people that, you know, that need me, you know, like, okay, it's mm -hmm. fine to sing in a church. It's beautiful, but I want to be, I want to do, do outreach. You want to do outreach. Things. Yeah. Outreach. Mm -hmm. I want to do that. And I want to be able to hug that woman that lost her home and their family and just, hug them and say i'm with you and i love you and here this is how i can help you i don't know yes amen amen i love that you know because it's not just about us it's a it is about other people you know our the ministry that he gives to us you know whatever it is it is about giving back and helping other people. So I'm so glad that you recognize this and you know what it's about because a lot of times we can be consumed. You know, there's a lot of other singers that are out there that it's consumed, like they're consumed about themselves, you know? And so we got to get to the place where it's, it's like, okay, no, it's God first, you know, and then it's others, you know? Yes. That's right. So, and I um, always tell God, to help me to maintain humble through it all that no matter what i don't want to forget where i came from yeah. because in all honesty that's what happens with a lot of musicians is they forget where they came from they forget their purpose and why they're doing what they're doing and it's very easy to do especially when you have a lot of people following you and putting mm -hmm. your head boast, boasting you and yeah. i tell god no matter how big i get i want to remain small so i love being nervous I say, if you're going to take the altar and you're going to go sing and preach and you ain't nervous, then I wonder what God you're serving because I want to shake <laughs> the minute I get to that altar and I want to know that the Lord is with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we love your energy and we you have, you have comments here. There's uh, a Jesse uh, Harap Casillas and he's saying amen and Diana Fuentes is here and and Jesse just said, preach girl. So yeah. beautiful worship from Sarah Torres. So you have a fan club over here. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. Everybody's watching. And so, 
So Angela, I always ask this question um, to all the viewers that come on to just give some word of encouragement to somebody that's out there. Maybe there's somebody who is also a great singer, but they don't they don't want to or they're scared to come out, you know, into the world and produce an album. I don't know. Give some kind of encouragement to the people that are out there that have a, a similar talent that you have. What I would say is make sure that God called you to do this because it's not an easy, it's not an easy job to do. You're going to go through a lot of roller coasters. You're going to go through a lot of things that people will not believe in you. They will knock you. They will criticize you. Um, and I've dealt with so many studios, musicians that have not been supportive that had made me just question my calling. And I've cried so many tears like you wouldn't even believe. But if God called you, no matter how many obstacles come your way, keep moving forward. Do not give up hope just because the other person said they didn't like how you sang or they don't think that you're going to be able to do it. And if like financially you're not stable, just believe in God. That if he has asked you to do this for him, trust and believe that he will put everything into perspective and you will have what you need in order to go forward. Hey, man, watch you. You're a preacher, too, now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she is so anointed. Thank you, Angela, for coming. Where can people contact you? You know, you have a fan club here. They're all going to want to contact you. Tell them where they can uh, reach you at. Well, I'm all over the place. So um, Facebook, definitely, you can follow me there. I try to post frequently. I have also um, a, a music channel, which is, um, it's, Adoradora Angela Lope, and that's on Facebook as well. I'm on Instagram, same name, um, Adoradora Angela Lope. You might have to <laughs> spell that out for whoever doesn't know, but it means worshiper Angela Lopez, but in Spanish. I'm on TikTok. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> I love posting on YouTube. And my email, so I don't put my number out there right now because, you know, mm -hmm. obviously yes. I don't feel comfortable with just random people calling me or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you can feel free to email me. So that's Angie, A-N-G-I-E, Ortiz, O-R-T-I-Z, one word. And then the line, the line, but it's the, low, the lower line. I don't know how, do you, how you say that. That line on the bottom. Mm -hmm. and then the underscore. The underscore. There we go. <laughs> so Angie Ortiz underscore music at yahoo.com. You guys can feel free to email me there. Um, or inbox me, any of these platforms. If you're following me, just feel free, send me an inbox. As long as you're, you know, <laughs> as long as you're really real about it, then I will reply. Amen, amen. So again, Angela, thank you for being on the show with us. You're such a, a pleasure to be around. We love your spirit, you know, and, and God is going to really do some great things with you. You know, all he really asks us is to have a willing heart. You know, and you're you have that you have that willing heart. I could see you know the M A A K I Señor all over you. You know, so God is gonna continue to bless you, and you know, and we just send blessings over you and your ministry. And and thank you again for joining us. And and thank you guys for everybody who has been with us here tonight, um, who joined the show, and uh, you know, and um, writing all these wonderful comments. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And um, uh, please, you know, be with us for the next show. This Friday, we have our Friday Night Mixer, which we're going to have more businesses and ministries. And it's going to be a, a group setting. Um, so please, you know, join us again on Friday nights. And if you want to know more about what we do at Synergy Network Worldwide, please, our website is right here below. It's www.synergynetworkworldwide.com. Thank you again, Angela. And thank you to all our viewers. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you, Margie.